Um, welcome to the listeners <laughs> the NCR podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the NCR Podcast, Steve. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. How you doing? Good, good. Um, I just want to chat with you about CrossFit, Steve. Mm-hmm. I think you're uh, you're one of the most interesting members that we have. <laughs> and I think one of the most enthusiastic about CrossFit, you know? Yeah. And uh, and so I, I, you know, I want you to... I want to have you on here so you can share your enthusiasm with with everyone else, and we can learn a little bit more about you because uh, I think you've got uh, I think you've got a lot of great opinions about certain things. Why don't you give everyone just a little background of yourself? Like, who are you? Who's Steve Bradley? Oh, Steve Bradley grew up just outside of uh, of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Um, moved up to Edmonton, Alberta, in uh, early, early, early in January of '74 bad mistake to move to Edmonton in the middle of winter but I but I did it anyhow nice and uh, met Lynn there and we've been together about 45 years now and uh, we've had two kids one who uh, lives just north of New York City and the other who um, has just moved to not too far from kind of between San Francisco and San Jose and uh, did a lot of sports when I was a kid mostly baseball and basketball and then I uh, discovered volleyball um, while in graduate school. And then I uh, did triathlon for 13 hardcore seasons before retiring from that in 2012. Triathlon for 13 seasons. Yes, yeah. yeah. And Any Ironmans? Yeah, there were two of those. Two Ironman. Two of those and wow. about 15 half irons. Wow. But my last, uh, my last three or four years, I really focused on trying to get faster and more proficient at the Olympic distance. Nice. And then I stopped doing them because my body was beaten up and my head wasn't in a good place anymore from being too competitive for too long. Mm-hmm. And uh, thought I'd pick it back up within a couple of seasons, and that didn't happen, but I discovered CrossFit instead. Nice. Yep. And that was what year? That was in early uh, 2016. So I've been I've been at NCR here for three and a half years. Nice and a 7 a.m. faithful ever ever since. Pretty much, yeah. yeah 7 a.m. The first class. You did a couple evening classes. To I start, did right? evening classes, but they were pretty much with the basics. Right. Right. And then, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, and the then basic. I was also that's doing 7 a.m. for the basics. Yeah. And then it just was a really really good fit. Living yeah. 50 kilometers from here, it's not necessarily a good fit first thing in the morning. Yeah, so but. You, yeah you live in Castleman. <laughs> yes, I do. So every morning, <laughs> everyone should actually know this, that you drive from Castleman every single day, sometimes twice a day, or do you stay in Ottawa and then and come back to prime timers on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Yes, yeah. I, I, I okay. stay in. I stay in on Mondays because I have a shift at Ottawa Mission on Mondays. So okay. three days a week, I kill a lot of time in the city yeah 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 you go over to to uh second cup once in a while i know second cup and bridgehead yep cool cool um so how old are you steve i'll be 71 in january 71 in january that's amazing (laughs) that's amazing and i mean i mean one of the fittest 71 year olds in ottawa i'm sure i'm Mm -hmm. sure especially after all this crossfit right I, well, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm certainly stronger than I was three years ago. I'll never forget the day that you sent me um, that email about how much you loved the NCR workout. Mm. The And for me, like that kind of signaled your realization that CrossFit was for you. Am I right on that? You're right on that. Okay. Like triathlon, what sort of drew you? Because you were, I mean... I would say you identify yourself as a triathlete, uh, sort of coming into CrossFit, right? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. And and what sort of drew you to the, to triathlons? Well, I I'd, I'd been running seriously, but um, I, I I've never had a bionic body, so I would right. uh, I would do things to myself from just doing a lot of really heavy duty running. I was doing a lot of distance stuff at the time, and one day I had I don't remember which injury it was, but my doctor said. You know, you're you're gonna you're just gonna keep hurting yourself unless you start biking more, 
this was in January. I didn't have a bike at the time. Um, so I just started swimming and then the light bulb went on one day uh. in the pool that, uh, you know, I've heard of this triathlon thing, so right. maybe I'll get me a bike. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. uh, so that, that was really it. And it extended my athletic life, um, hugely because I, if I just kept being a straight runner, I would yeah. have, I would have kept breaking down. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. So that was, so in a sense, like that's sort of been the pattern, even coming into CrossFit, you kind of found CrossFit and like, this is sort of, this is, you know, in a sense, extending your athletic life another, you know, you know, into the unforeseen future, how many years, yep. um, in the same way that sort of triathlete acted as a way of, of some cross training. Yes. Now yeah. it's CrossFit's acting as that on another level almost. Oh, on, on, on many different levels. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, I've been aware of CrossFit since, uh, I mean, I remember back in probably 2002, 2003, all the, all the hell that broke loose when triathletes heard the things that were being said about mm, them by the, the CrossFit community right. at the time, that, what, they, that were they, really weren't, just, they weren't the fittest. No, they weren't the fittest and that they right, were very right, right. good at going in one direction, always swimming yeah. straight, cycling right. straight, running straight. But then, um, you know, I went back and I thought about what, what I now know are those points of performance. And I thought, um, you know, I don't have power. I don't have strength. Uh, as I get older, I need to work on my balance, my agility. The 10 general the, physical the skills. The 10 general physical skills. And I realized that I, you know, I maybe had the uh, the endurance ones, but in the other areas, you know, I didn't. So that was a real turning uh. point for me to think, this is where I need my future to go. So you looked at that list before you even giant joined a CrossFit gym and you, and you recognized? Yes. Uh, yeah, I probably looked at that in... Uh, October or November of 2015 and then thought about it for a few weeks and then started shopping. Oh, very cool. Did you do any strength training on your own, like for triathlons or anything? Well, I did. I'd go into, you know, just, just a regular run of the mill gym and do stuff. Okay. But and you just make it up on your own or did you have I made like, it up on my own. <laughs> yeah. Any, anything that, you know, Ben, look at the guy over here and like copy him kind of thing. Yeah, there was that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And so, so you joined NCR and like, and shortly after you did this big event that we do every year, it's called the NCR workout where we get everyone together on Canada day. We run down, we do down to, uh, down to the water. We do a big workout as a group. We come back and then you send me this email and I was like, Oh wow. Like Steve really likes this place. I think this guy, this guy's a lifer. This guy is going to stay with <laughs> NCR forever. Yeah. No doubt. After this, this email, it was long and, and basically you went on to say like how it was such a great experience for you. It was positive experience. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Like what stuck out for you that particular workout and sort of how it was run or what you were experiencing? Like why was that so impactful? It was the gathering of the tribe, I think. It was, uh, you know, various various components of the tribe grabbled gravitate together every day but that right. was when you know whatever it was that time 40 50 60 of us got together and we masked out here and mm -hmm. uh you know some people were on the bike and uh others were on the run and then That's we right. got down I there think we had and a couple rollerbladers too might have had a couple rollerbladers and then you get down there and there's that hill <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah so we run down we do like all these hill climbs and then we basically do a version of cindy and then hill more hill climbs and come back yes and that was also a very very rainy day that that one and so it was uh it was it was a real it was a real zoo down there it was some of the younger people coming down the hill yeah. and doing you know just uh, sliding down on you know they were brave enough to oh, just yeah, take a dive right. and slide yeah. down and we get to the bottom and there were burpees in the mud and oh, it was a blast that's awesome <laughs> And it, like, what was unique about that experience? Like, I mean, it sounds like we just did a workout on the surface, right? But in, you know, you did that every day doing triathlon, mm -hmm. but what was, what was unique about it? Like, what did it, what sort of made it stand out? In, in all the years I did triathlon, all the millions of hours I trained, I never did it with anybody else. I never had running partners, cycling partners, swimming partners. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, very, very solo endeavor for me, which served me really well in the longer distant races because right. I was used to being in my own mm -hmm. head. And then I came here and uh, dug the class scene, you know, yep. being part of part of a class and the supportiveness. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the NCR was uh, was really just it, it was the mass. It was mm -hmm. it was how many of us were out there doing this and having a ball doing it in the rain, in the mud, and then coming back and just kind of celebrating. Yeah, it's just it fun. Was, uh, yeah. It's just plain old yeah. fun. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> and then so so you in 2016, so you you joined. And then you did shortly after that because that was in, well, not shortly because that was the summer and then basically a whole year sort of went by and, and then you did your first Open. Yes. Yeah. And wh what did you think about the Open? Um, well, it was, it was very frightening initially. And, mm -hmm. and I can still, you know, I know that for the next five Thursdays coming up, I'm going to be kind of scared to see what that workout <laughs> why, is. Why is it frightening? <laughs> Well, you know, they could do something like put in uh, put in overhead squats. Um. <laughs> so you're just scared to see the weakness. You're scared to see a weakness of yours. Scared to see a weakness. and I think uh, it's fair to say everyone's nervous to see yeah. a weakness. You just don't want it to come up, right? Like, yes. Yeah. But hopefully you've trained hard enough at that that it's not as scary <laughs> as the year before right no each e each year each year gets a little bit better and right. i actually en i actually enjoy the comps and i've uh haven't told anybody here this but i've signed up for at a gym i discovered down in albany new york just about a month ago that i really liked uh they're doing a master's competition on december 7th no way and they're also just starting a master's group there so i so i wrote to wrote to Shawnee, one of the owners, and I said, you know, I know you're starting the seniors group there. If somebody gets really excited by um, by CrossFit and they're looking for a partner for December 7th, I'll yeah. come down to it. And they had someone, 67-year-old, who's been there for a little while. He really wants to do a comp, but no he's very way. scared. So I'll go down and do that. 67, 71. So, yeah. That's, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> How many, what's the average age in that comp? Do you, have you... Well, it's that. it's called Masters of the Universe. Okay, so we'll start That's at so thirty-five. Cool. Oh, okay, okay, and, okay. Um, and it'll go and a, each age category all the way up, probably sixty plus. And, yeah, and oh, they'll okay. they'll have an RX and a scale division. And I think for us, they'll scale us on the same level that the Open scales the older people too. Right. Yeah. Which they'll is probably very just generously. use that as a template. Yeah. A little bit. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. You go in Albany, like just so people know too, like you spend some time in Albany on a regular basis. So you're like familiar with these gyms and stuff. Well, I travel, I travel down there to visit my daughter. Um, right. I'm in upstate New York, a whole lot more around Lake Platts, Lake Placid and Plattsburgh. Right, right, right. That's when you, that's where you volunteer at the prisons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So that's awesome. So you're doing a competition. We're going to be competing at the same time, December 7th, you said? Oh really? Yeah, I'm gonna be well. I'm gonna be oh. in Argentina. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're gonna go down to Albany right. and go to Argentina, <laughs> and then we'll both win our comps, and then oh, we'll okay. come back, <laughs> yeah, and we're both we'll hang the banners in in uh, in the gym. We'll get Steve Bradley banner up there. Put your teammate up there. So you have to flip a coin or like buy it off your partner if you guys win, because okay, we do that. we want we want the banner here. We want the banner here. Okay, so that's awesome. So, th so the open overall for you is a positive experience. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. and I've really tried to talk it up with, uh, with, with anybody at seven o'clock. Anybody who will listen to me, I'm trying to trying to get them trying to come to get into them it. To do I it. think I think it should be positive for everyone. It's a, it's yeah. a real blast. Absolutely, it's a, and it's a test too, and it's a test under certain pressure. And while it's scary. Mm -hmm. To me, on some levels, it overall it's really positive pressure. And about three days after the open is done, I miss it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's positive pressure. Some people I know are, are nervous about, you know, seeing something that they just can't do. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you say to them? You know, like, did you ever come up, did you come across a movement that you literally could not do? I think, was it last year? Maybe there was, there were, there were overhead squats. And at that point, um, right. My knee was so you know my knee wasn't really good, and right. I just I just didn't do that workout. Yeah. I, I kind of kind of regret that because I think I could have squeezed out one or two or three overhead squats, but okay. it was really just um, well, saving just, the knee. Yeah, saving the knee. So you're not so you're not kicked out of the open if you don't do a workout. No, yeah. no, no. You just just come back the the the, the next week, week and yeah, you, try you, another one. You know, if you if you bail on three, you come back and do four. Have you looked at your old? Uh, the old scores for your for your, your open because you, you've done this will be your this will be your fourth 
I think this will be my fourth. Yes, yes. this will be your fourth now. Yep. Yeah. yeah, this will be your fourth now. And so now online, you've got you've got a, a bit of a bank going now. You can see all your past your past records and all that stuff. Have you looked at that yet? I've I've gone back once or twice. I also <laughs> yeah. keep a pretty good log, so all this stuff oh, okay, is in okay. is in my log. But I don't. Uh, uh, I mean, I can't even remember really what we did back in February and March. It gets mixed up yeah, with oh, yeah. other opens and other wads. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, there are so, so many wads, so little time. I can't keep them straight. Have you seen some improvement in your ranking like year to year? Have you noticed that at all? Uh, yes. Yes. But I think the the more important thing for me is I see improvements here. Um, right. I mean, I still have 247 weaknesses in CrossFit, <laughs> but, you know, I'm chipping away at them, you know, gradually, I yeah. think. And, yeah. I, you know, overall, yeah. my strength has gotten better. Yeah. And, uh, and your, I, your squat's gotten better. I was actually, <laughs> I meant to compliment you on that because today, you and Charlene from, Charlene's another 7 a.m. regular, the two of you, you were squatting side by side, and I looked at you guys today, and I was like, wow, like you guys have come miles from where you were with your just your air squat when you walked in on day one. Like, you you know, you had trouble staining your heels, keeping your, your knees, oh, tracking yeah. your toes, and even keeping a neutral spine below parallel, and now you're hitting all those points of performance, or at least, like, you can, you can push yourself to try and speed up a little bit, and maybe you speed wobble, but you're able to <laughs> hit those positions, and, and Charlene... She's way more upright. She's starting yes. to look really good with her air squat. Yep. Yeah. So it's just, that's just time, right? It is, it is. And yeah. uh, I, I, I'm willing to give it that time. And I, <clears throat> I can be tough on myself. And, you know, people who know me know that I'm tough on myself. So I can sometimes leave here and, you know, think, oh, man, what's gone wrong? But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, come back the next day and, and things will you know, things will be better. I mean, the wads mm-hmm. giveth and the wads taketh away. And, uh, they give it you know, they it. <laughs> it's so and, true. I mean, I think of that one last week, uh, uh, that, that had the legless rope climbs and the squats snatches and the oh, overhead closer. squats. And that was, that was a very difficult one for me with the squat stuff, but it was the first time I've been able to do legless rope climbs. And so, you know, that was one where, uh, you know, when, 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 when Paul announced that there'll be no feet today, I thought, oh, man, what am I going to do? I thought, well, I'm going to try really hard on yeah, these yeah. legless ones. So, you know, part of that was, you know, I left thinking, man, I'm never going to get the, those, the squat snatch and the overhead squat, yeah. squat but out. So, you know, I can pull myself a ways up the rope with, there you go. without legs. So, that's pretty good. So that's, uh, that's I mean, really that's the wonderful thing about this, that, oh, man. you know, that's the, it's the constantly varied that means there are lots of options to succeed too. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You you can constantly be looking for things. And I mean, I think sometimes people can look at it the wrong way as they look at it as like, there's so many things they're not good at. Yep. Right. And you yep. can get lost in that a little bit. But if you, if you just, you know, if you just flip your perspective and you're, and you just take it as more of a cl- glass half, half full, you've got all these opportunities, like you said, where you can just get a little PR. Yes. Right. Like, yes. can you get up one more foot on that legless rope climb? Yep. You know, can you go from now you're doing lying to standing rope climbs? Okay. Well, can you do a dead hang from the rope for like 30 seconds? Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many different ways to look at it. And I, I think that's why I like keeping track of things right in a log book like you do yeah. or doing the open helps because it sets these benchmarks for you Yes. and you can actually start to see the small improvements otherwise if you don't track anything if you don't ever do the open if you don't test yourself against you know other people in in you know a friendly competition setting Mm -hmm. then it becomes very hard to um to sort of see those small improvements over a long period of time and you kind of get discouraged a little bit right it can it can help it can help motivate you in the long term Mm -hmm. you know and so that's why also we have that test week at ncr2 we do a test week so that you can you know you can come in you can see whether it's a you know, and you're not going to hit a PR in everything, yeah. but you hit a PR in a couple of things and then you got some stuff to improve on. And now you got yes. motivation to go for the next, you know, six months, three months, whatever. Yep. Right. Yeah. I love the test week. Yeah. I really do. Did yeah. you hit some records? Yes, I did. But I can't remember what they are right now. I'd have to go back and log and look. Did you hit some, <laughs> did you get some, or did you sort of figure out maybe some weaknesses or some areas where you're like, ah, I got to go back and improve on that. Maybe a little bit more where I didn't think I had to originally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For example. 
I'd have to go back and look. Oh, okay. <laughs> At least <laughs> you have there. it all written it's down. It's there, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so one, I mean, some someone who, who wants to do the open might say, you know, it's easy for you to do it because you've done it before. Like what, what motivated you to do the open the year that you had never done it, the very first year? What was your motivation there? Like how does, how does someone get motivated to do the open for the first time? You just need peer pressure, I guess. I, I, I think it was peer pressure or, or maybe it was more peer support. Right. It was um, other people saying that it's, it's a fun thing to do and uh, right. you can adjust it to you can adjust it to what your abilities are. If there's, if there's a workout that lends itself to doing it RX and, and Jill is, Jill is really good at doing that. She mm -hmm. tries every mm -hmm. single one of them RX, That's right. but knowing that the, uh, the, you know, that the scaled is there too, to fall back on. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pressure at all. It was mm -hmm. really just supportiveness, which is what I'm trying to do. Talking it up with, good. with other people. Okay. Um, maybe we got to get you some of these other classes. <laughs> yeah so you're not so not it's not you're gonna get all the 7 a.m to sign up but we gotta get we gotta start placing you on mondays you gotta go to you gotta go to 6 a.m wednesdays you gotta go to noon and you gotta start talking up all those people yeah <laughs> Well, my success rate with seven isn't isn't that great now. I'm okay. still digging away at a couple of people, but yeah, um, I think I think a, a couple of people have said that there's they came up to me after class today. They said that they were thinking of signing up. So I think you you definitely your your magic is working a little bit. That's good. <laughs> Do you have any goals for this year? Oh, I think my big one is to is to is to hit a hit a 300 deadlift. I'm 15 pounds away from it. Um, wow! It was probably nine months ago that you were you were doing the class, and I was trying to 275, and I got it off the ground, you know, an inch or so, and put it back down. And you said you had it moving. And uh, I said, yeah, but I couldn't have gone any further. And you said, well, how bad do you want it? <laughs> I said, well, I guess bad enough to try it. And you, and you yeah. said, try it again. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I did, and I got that 245. And I so, you know, that. I keep, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm at 285 now. That's and good. that would be, I think that, I think that 15 pounds is in my, is in my range. You I, never know, a one-room max deadlift might show up at the open. Well, that would be sweet. Yeah. That would be really, really sweet. And yeah, then yeah. I think, you know, the, doing that legless rope climb last week, I got up, you know, only like about 11 feet on the best one. But mm -hmm. I think if I keep, if I chalk well, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, maybe I can do that. I just got to learn to coordinate the, that would be a really big one for me. Coordinate the kip a little bit. Yes. Yeah. What about for the open? Do you have any goals for the open? Like, what do you, what do you, what do you want to see sort of happen for yourself over the course of the five weeks? I, I really can't say because it's so it just depends on what they what they throw what that Thursday announcement is That's and right. then then I will then I will work on a goal um, within that within that within yeah it's kind of a a, a late breaking decision you know yeah. what's there how am I going to approach it right this past open I think I redid I think I redid I did I redid at least two of the workouts and maybe three of them mm -hmm. You know, try something on the Friday, and then if I, you know, if I think I can do better, come back on the Sunday or Monday. I think that's a good perspective. A lot of people, like, part of the reason they, they don't want to do the Open is because they look at it as a whole, like, five-week competition, and they, they set their expectations for themselves too high. They don't just come in and, you know, hit it one week at a time and just see what happens, right? Yes. Which is, I think, a better approach. Yeah. You know, if you're nervous about doing the Open because you're like, ah, I'm, you know, over the course of the five weeks, I'm going to be compared to other people, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to do well, but I don't know what's happening. It's like, ah, forget about all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. just wait to, to see what kind of disgusting workout Dave Castro, <laughs> Dave Castro programs. <laughs> and then attack it on that week, yeah. you know, go to your gym, throw down with your friends. Yes. And then uh, and then do it all over again the next week and just approach each week one at a time. And, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to have fun if you do that, I think. Yep. Because you should be stress-free, a little yeah. bit less stressful, you know? Yeah, it works, it works for me that way. It really does. Yeah. And Very cool. Did you, um, are you thinking of getting your wife in here again, Lynn? Uh, she she could be tempted, but she has so much going on with with her life now. It's really difficult to uh, she she's become more busy than ever. She's always been a busy person, mm -hmm. but now she's got a, a ton of stuff happening. And I don't see I don't see her coming back here anytime too soon, um, unfortunately. But that's okay. You can go. You can take the open workouts and you can bring them home to her, and you can get her to do them in the house. Uh, that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe if I send her, maybe if I send her enough emails, she'll do them. She'll do them in secret. I bet she'll do them in secret. She might. Cool. So you, so the next thing for you up is the open, and then you're going. Well, you're just a CrossFit competitor now because you got the open, and then you've got you've got the <laughs> competition in December. And, you know, you're going to be traveling around. You like to drop in in all these different gyms because you're doing uh, all your volunteering in the in yeah. the States and stuff. Yeah. So busy schedule for Steve. He's yeah. just a traveling CrossFit athlete. <laughs> I love visiting other places. It, it gives me, you know, it gives me some kind of uh, some kind of perspective. It really, really makes me appreciate here more than ever. And I think it's now 33 other gyms I've, I've visited and there are only you know, three or four of them that are kind of at the level of attention that, that we all get get here at NCR. But, um, you know, I, I, when, when, when I did the level one training right at the end, Matt, Matt made the comment about, uh, you know, become uh, CrossFit ambassadors. And mm-hmm. so part of, you know, I like thinking of myself as a CrossFit ambassador, being able to say good things about it. But that requires, you know, I think a little bit of perspective too, kind of a worldview and definitely, and, and just seeing how other gym cultures are and, uh, you know, what the communities are like. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I like visiting other places, but, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So right. you know, it's just great when I've gone away to come back here. Really, I mean, I mean that seriously. It's uh, definitely you know, it all comes together here each and you know each and every day. And thanks, Steve. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. We try. We try our best. You know, <laughs> we try our best yeah. to keep you coming back to seven a.m. every day. <laughs> um, well, you've got one last chance to to convince some people because. You, you're probably going to stick to 7 a.m. So now you know that the evening crew is going to listen to this podcast, right? So you got one last chance to try and get people to sign up. What are you going to, t- what are you going to tell them? For the open? For the open. Oh, I just, um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. And, uh, you know, I have, like I said before, I have 243 weaknesses, but that doesn't stop me from, from, from showing up and being part of, uh, being part of this, this worldwide, this worldwide event that, is you know probably the biggest gathering of the tribe anywhere mm-hmm. and uh it doesn't have to have any pressure to it at all and you know you make of it what you want and it's just just great to 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 throw down whether you do it on friday night or saturday morning or you do it privately on sunday or you know sometimes i've done it monday mm-hmm. after class yeah i mean i guess it's not really a throw down when it's just uh, you know, me judging you. someone else and someone else is judging me, but that's, that's also really, but sometimes you can get a good, pretty good crowd cheering for you. Well, that's nice too. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Particularly if it's a workout that you're proficient at. Right. Right. <laughs> but even still not, you know, sometimes that isn't so, but people want you to get that next rep so badly. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. whether you're going to get it or not, the, yeah. the crowd, you know, it, uh, it's definitely energizing. So the open's good for that. You yes. Yeah. I mean, you, regular classes are good for it, but the open when there is a crowd, it's even, it's even, it's even better. And I think that's sometimes where the, where the magic happens, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or you know, certainly the the magic of the moment when just you know it's kind of electrifying and stunning all at once. Mm-hmm. And you know, what is this? What's this? This world I'm in. But it's a it's a good question. It's a it's a great environment. Love it. Love it. Yeah. All right, Steve. We'll end it there because I know you've got to go get uh, get Avril and get ready for prime timers get later ready on for today. Prime timers, yes. I think the prime timers uh, are excited to do. Are they excited? Have you talked to them to do some of the open workouts? Because I I kind of threw that out there that we might do some with them. That was just last Thursday. I I think they will be excited because one of the really exciting things that's happened in the past two months is that you now bring us you and Reza bring us to the whiteboard. And what we're doing is an adaptation of the regular class workout. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, what I've seen now is that instead of us coming and just kind of milling about, mm-hmm. we, we come and uh, other people are gathering in front of the whiteboard and they're looking at it because they know that, um, they know that we're going to be doing something the regular classes do. I was just talking Love to Andrew it. Maxner about that. And, uh, you know, he used the term, so it's more inclusive. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's how people are feeling. It. It's yeah. a it's yeah. a big difference from when we and it was all fine when we'd yeah. go around the corner. Yeah. And we'd have our own thing on the whiteboard. Yeah. But now Well it was a natural evolution. When we first started the prime timers class, we you know, everyone was a beginner. Yes. You know, so there it was necessary to, you know, go through some of the foundational movements, get some basic mm-hmm. 
movement patterns established and you know get you guys used to doing crossfit essentially and now everyone's sort of on that level where they're you know they're able to follow the regular class programming and you know scale it Mm -hmm. and uh, no it's great i agree so anyway we're gonna try to we're gonna try and get those open workouts programmed for you guys in one of those days (laughs) because that'll be really good and then hopefully some people can uh can come and do it on like a saturday or something like that or at least come watch yep you know if someone wants to throw down with you in the open what day are you planning on doing the open workouts uh, what what's th- what 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 someone are you thinking of? I don't know anybody. <laughs> Anyone watching this, if they're like, I want to throw down with Steve Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh, I, I I don't know. I don't think I'm going to tip my hand. Maybe on that seven a.m. Fridays. I bet you you'll you'll be there. Um, well, I, I'll be there at seven a.m. Whether okay. I'm ready to do it at eight, you know. So I like to, yeah. So it's if uh, we program the uh, if we program the open workouts for the classes, then that'll be it probably. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. All right, Steve. Thanks for coming on, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. Hopefully a couple more people signed up for the Open after this. I hope so. I hope so. I hope we can get that up uh, by at least 10 more. Okay, love it. Maybe 15 more. Thank you for everything, Pete. Okay, no problem. Yep.